Cool Math Games is most likely something you have heard of at one point in your life. This website, having almost endless amounts of games, has no doubt given thousands upon thousands of people many happy memories and fun games to hop onto during school. See, many of the gaming websites, and even websites in general, have been locked down and restricted. So when you were at school and you had nothing else to do, you had Cool Math Games. For this website to have tons upon tons of games and not be restricted, well, it was pretty much bound to get successful. To this day, Cool Math Games is still a very widespread website that people still love to play during school, me included. And because many people are now having to go back to school and leave behind summer, I'd figure this would be a relevant video to talk about. So in this video, I'm going to be revisiting some Cool Math Games. Fireboy and Water Girl is a multiplayer 2D platformer. It features the epic characters Fireboy and Water Girl. These two companions must complete these puzzles and platforms in order to complete the objective. Because this game had the rare chance to be on multiplayer, it's very fun to play with another friend of yours, even if you and your partner suck immensely. <laughs> Why are we so, we're so bad? We're so <laughs> The first game takes place in a forest type environment, where you and your partner need to get to these doors in order to win. At the end of the objective, you are graded based on time, gems collected, and even this big gem, which is only used in some maps. There are three types of modes in these maps. Standard, which basically grades you on time and gems, like I said previously. A racing mode, where the music becomes upbeat and you need to escape as quickly as possible, while also collecting gems. And then there's this big white gem right here, which isn't required to get, but it's best you do, as if you don't get it, you get an instant F. Because Fireboy is made out of fire, and Water Girl is made out of water, they have these special areas where only they can access. Water Girl cannot access lava, or she dies. Fireboy cannot access water, or he dies. And the worst case scenario, there's acid that kills both of them. This game also has physics, which also contributes to the fact that me and my partner are really bad. There's seesaws, cubes, buns, and other just lovely mechanics in this game that requires the player to be at their full attention. As if they mess up, it makes the level unplayable, so they have to restart. And by the way, when I said multiplayer, it's not online multiplayer. You have to use the same screen. Which makes sense because I don't think they can afford servers when the game is free, let alone on a website. Even after all these years playing with many friends on this game, I still have not gone halfway through the campaign. But despite that, I still give this game a funny A tier. This game is very challenging and can make you hate your friend deeply. I figured the next game we need to talk about should probably be the most popular of them all. If you've heard of Cool Math Games at least once, then you will most likely have heard of the Run series, no doubt. For simplicity's sakes, I will mostly be talking about Run 3, as it's the most expansive. Run 1 is the original, but other than that, there's not really anything else. Run 2 adds new features, but also changes the design of the levels, which I'm not really a big fan of. So Run 3 is most likely the best one to talk about. In this game, you run. But not only do you run, you can also jump and even wall jump. You are this little gray alien thing that must traverse through space to complete each level presented to you. Because you're in space, there is a lower gravity than that of on Earth. I mean, I thought space didn't have any gravity at all, but whatever. The main game has over 50 levels. Uh, hey all, so this is Funny Fart post-production here. Uh, just to say that there's actually not 50 levels, but rather 309. Uh, sorry about that. Each one obviously getting harder and harder than the last. Eventually, there starts to be these gravel-looking things that upon touching will fall, and the late levels don't even look like actual rooms anymore. Despite being very simple, this game is very dynamic and has a lot of replayability. You can choose your skin of your alien character, which you need to unlock by completing a certain number of levels. You can get skins like these, 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 and also this skin if you really want it. There is also different shoes in the game. There's no boots, which doesn't really change anything at all. There's these skate boots, which makes you a lot faster, which may sound good, but because you're going fast, you'll have to predict your actions twice as fast. And there's also these boots, which makes you slower and jump higher. I don't know why you would want these. And even when you complete the 50 levels, there is a mode which plays pretty much infinitely. There's this other alien dude that talks to you at certain levels, although he really isn't that important. And the walls that you run on change colors over time, like blue, green, red, orange, and other colors that make the walls look pretty. One more thing about the Run series is that its music is an absolute bop. Having only seven music tracks, I have never seen so much dedication put into music on a cool math games before, and it really does just make you bop your head up and down mindlessly. Overall, this game is just amazing. From the endless replayability to the music and the levels, there's not a lot of reasons to not play this. Easy S tier. The 
next game on the list is Awesome Tanks 1 and 2. Awesome Tanks is a game about, you guessed it, tanks. Awesome Tanks is another 2D game where you shoot other tanks as a tank. It is a level-based system and obviously gets more harder and harder as levels go by. There are different types of tanks that you have to fight, all with their own unique abilities. There's this flamethrower tank, this turret tank, and a suicide bomber tank. At level 1, you start with basically nothing, but as each level goes by, killing tanks will give you more monies, which allows you to customize your tank. You can change your tank's armor, weapons, speed, and even vision. By the end of the game, you should be this killing machine that takes a lot to kill. There are these boxes around the map that will give you a random thing. This blue looking thing is ice, which allows you to freeze all enemies. There could just be money in it, there could be ammo for your weapons, and even medkits. Oh, and there's also bombs, so watch out. There are many bosses that you have to fight with in the game, some of them being really hard to the point where you have to do a ring around the rosies with them. Not only can you upgrade to different weapons and armor, but you can also upgrade the weapons themselves to make them even stronger. There's also a second game too, which adds new tanks, new weapons, and new stages. It's a very simple game as well as very short. You could probably beat the game within 45 minutes. There's not a lot of other game modes other than just these stages, so there's not much replayability in these two games. There are three difficulties in these two games, easy, medium, and hard. I played all the difficulties, and despite being noticeably harder, it's still a fairly easy game. The only reason I would die is because I would either rush them or try to figure out how to use the controls, as the controls are very wonky. There are also soundtracks in this game, though it's not really anything special. Being a simple game, you should still try and play the game, as for its 45 minutes, it's a pretty fun game, and I'd say it succeeded doing its job. I'm gonna put this in the funny B tier. Let's go to the next game. The last game we're going to be playing is Ninja Painter. The description on this game on the Miniclip website states that you are torn between the decision of leading a life as an artist or a ninja. You must venture out in this puzzling quest the city of Megapolis to see where the path of the Ninja Painter will lead. There are different levels, easy, medium, and hard. There are also a number of levels. If the ninja falls off the edge, you'll see the game over screen. The color is blue? What? So basically this guy is having an identity crisis, so he must go to these temple looking things to decide where his fate lies. The gameplay is exactly how it would sound in the title. You paint, but with ninja skills. Each level has these X's that you have to paint in order to open these unlocked doors. There are also stars in the game for bonus points. The X will start out with one color, but as levels go by, the X's will need to require different colors to paint. At mid-game, there are these glass blocks that will break upon impact. Despite being a flexible ninja, you cannot change direction once you go somewhere, as you moving will cause you to have 3,000 heart attacks just from going to the left. Your only chances of moving are these curved walls that alter your direction, or these ladders that upon impact will cause you to stop. There are over 30 levels in the game, and over time, the walls will change texture. Perhaps it's a metaphor for the increasingly more difficult challenges? I mean, as the levels go on, they get harder, and the walls turn into hard steel, which is like hard. After the release of Ninja Painter, it wouldn't be long until this game would get a sequel, which adds new mechanics and even a woman variant who is also suffering from the same identity crisis. Overall, this game is very challenging and is pretty funny. A tier. Thank you very much for watching this video. This video was rather tedious when in production compared to my other videos, but overall it was a lot of fun to edit and revisit all the cool math games. If you guys would like to see a sequel, I will happily make one for everyone to see. But other than that, that's about it. See ya.